Oh. Nancy Davis, managing partner and chief investment officer at Quadratic Capital. She says the bond market is screaming, warning investors about market risk. Nancy, great to have you with us. Thanks. Mostly. How loud? How loud is the scream right now? <laughs> it's pretty loud. <laughs> um, what we look at in the bond market is specifically the rates market, and if you look at rates. The T-bill and the 10-year Treasury are exactly the same yield. So the bond market is screaming, you know, it's not optimistic on the economy. And that's even with the um, July 25 basis point cut in and about a 40 percent probability for 50 basis points cut. So if you just look at rates, the market is not saying, you know, things are good. Um, so it's, it's a question. How much do you discount this argument that well, the long end of the yield curve is being held hostage by what's going on with the ECB. And so this sort of either evening or inversion doesn't really – it's not as indicative as, as it is uh, or would have been in the past. Yeah. No, I personally think the flattening, um, the flatness of the yield curve is really from 2011 when we were at zero rates um, already in the U.S. We were having a European crisis and the Fed implemented Operation Twist. And that took the yield curve from 250 basis points down very quickly, 100 basis points. And now we're we're completely flat. And so I really think a reverse twist would normalize. And Powell talks about that. He says inflation expectations are what drive actual inflation. So I think the Fed is kind of gearing us up to do a reverse twist, and that will normalize the yield curve. So, uh, I mean, the obvious question here is, yes, the yield curve is in places inverted, but all of the data on the U.S. economy seems good. I, I, I better qualify that. Some of the Fed regional surveys were bad uh, two months ago, but they seem to have picked up. The Philly Fed empire seemed to be doing well. Unemployment is low. You've got no inflation. And if you do get a China deal, then companies can spend again on productivity. I mean, I, I understand about the yield curve, but I see so many other things that are positive related to the bond market. Yeah, no, I would definitely, I would echo, you know, uh, John's pick on, on China and investing in um, having growth in the market because the Fed has got, you know, kind of two aspects. They're either they see something that the rest of the market doesn't and things are going to be, you know, we're in, you know, on the cusp of a next recession or things are great and they're going to really jumpstart this economy and we're going to have inflation and things will be super risk on. So having growth in your portfolio makes a lot of sense. I just think, you know, the bond market is definitely saying we're at a point where it could go either way right now. So, Nancy, <clears throat> what if the government bond market is telling us about, to Melissa's point, the growth, the global slowdown in growth, but yet the taxable fixed income market, where spreads are incredibly tight, high yield investment grade, are telling us that asset pricing is still OK? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that's a challenge for investors portfolio because most people own equities and then they have credit. So, and credit spreads and equities, when equities sell off, credit spreads tend to widen as well. So I think having diversity in your portfolio and moving away from credit, because credit spreads are so incredibly tight, to more growthy equities or having more government bonds, especially um, given the Fed being so dovish, is the way I like to position it. So growth stocks and long government bonds, because I don't think you're being paid to own credit, personally. Nancy, do you think the Fed is reacting to uh, the same things that you're talking about when you say the market is screaming this. I said that a couple months ago as well. And do you think the market is the market? The Fed is listening to that, that the market is telling them you've got to do something because this is a warning sign. And that's why they're talking about making at least a 25 basis point cut, maybe even 50. Yeah, I completely agree with your point that the, the rates market, it's the biggest market in the world. You know, it's a, the OTC rates market is about $600 trillion. That's 30 times the size of the U.S. equity market cap around, you know, $23, $25 trillion. And so I think the Fed is looking at what the rates market is implying. And the rates market is saying you need to cut. And, and that was actually earlier than um, when the, the dovish talk came. Really, the dovish talk started at the December meeting, and that's when the Fed, you know, back, remember in December, we had three hikes actually priced in, and now it's had, you know, almost a 200 basis point swing on really no actual monetary policy, just commentary. So I think, you know, it's definitely at a very precarious time for investors with credit spreads at all-time tights, equities at all-time highs. And I personally like positioning a portfolio more with growth, and I agree with your call on, on KWeb, growth stocks on one side and then having government bonds on the other side, because I don't think you're getting 
paid to own credit at these tight levels. So, so you mentioned that the two different scenarios could go, it could go either way. And so that's why you have this sort of, I don't want to call it strange, but it almost seems counterintuitive to be invested in treasuries and very growthy stocks at the same time. At what point do you start thinking, oh, you know, I'm getting enough data to believe that one allocation is <laughs> we should move towards equities, for instance, and away from, from treasuries or vice versa? Yeah, so I, I really like um, having options um, in the portfolio because it's such unknown probabilities. And the implied volatility market, especially in rates, is in generational lows, so it's incredibly cheap. Um, so what we like is if you believe the Fed, if you're one of those people who says don't fight the Fed, listen to what they're saying, they're saying they want to normalize inflation expectations. So if you believe them, you would think the yield curve should steepen because having a flat yield curve means, you know, the market's actually pricing in disinflation for the next decade where CPI is 1.8. So I like having positions where you can have the, the if the Fed is, you know, going to be successful with their mandate. Or on the alternative, if we have another recession and the Fed is really seeing something that we're not seeing in the data, because if you just look at unemployment, the data looks great, having something that will do well in a recession too. And to me, that's the yield curve, because when you have um, in a recession, the Fed will cut rates and volatility will increase.